Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to Harrow's Diary and welcome to 90 Days of Bible Study. Today we're going to be looking at the topic revival. We're going to be looking at revival and we're going to start with the scripture I um, put up yesterday, oh, sorry, earlier this morning about revival from Acts in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and by the grace of God tomorrow we'll be going back to our to Romans that we are we are studying before we you know diverted a bit so we'll be going back to the book of Romans by tomorrow by God's grace so today we're going to read from the book of Acts in chapter 8 this is Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples and he said in Acts 1 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So, but you shall receive power. And today we're talking about revival. What does it mean to be revived? This we're talking about disciples that have been with Jesus for years throughout the, 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 the journey, throughout his, his journey as a person, throughout his journey as a, uh, a Messiah, throughout his journey, you know, as a disciple, throughout his journey as a healer, throughout his journey as a, a, a deliverer, throughout his journey as God in human form on this on this earth throughout his, his walk on the surface of the earth they were with him you know and they experienced a dimension of him but they were weary with sorrow when he died they were weighed down they were some of them would probably have been disappointed to say the least right so after everything he did they killed him after everything he did he died after everything he did he had to end that way you know so jesus was comforting them before he, the ascension and he said in acts 1 8 oh, i have to adjust this he says what you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. Hallelujah. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall be enabled. You shall be you shall be strengthened. And he said, hey, Don't worry. You will be revived. You will be revived. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. You will be revived. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, both in Judea, in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God. That is the promise of the Father, that we shall receive power, you know. After the baptism of the Holy Ghost, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Over the last few days, we've been talking about, you know, walking in the will of God. What we have received, what we receive when we become Christians. And this is, this is part of it. It says, you shall receive power. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the presence of God. The indwelling of God in us. God in us. God in me. And that is power and you will receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses now there is there are some people that naturally they are shy they are timid people and so they cannot speak stand up in public to speak they cannot face the crowd they cannot 
Some people cannot even face a camera, you know, they are shy and all that. But you will not notice that the same person that used to be very shy and timid and everything, all of a sudden starts standing up in public to talk, to preach, to, you know, and you're wondering what has happened. That person has received the reviving power, the reviving power of God in his spirit. He has received a touch in his spirit. And that has stirred up the gift of God in him and swallowed up a lot of things that would before now have hindered him or her from doing the work of God. Praise God. So we're talking about receiving power being revived i'm going to look at a quick example in acts chapter 2 you know before now i'm just going to give a quick a brief background jesus christ before he was betrayed on the night he was betrayed he told peter he said you are going to deny me three times before the cup calls and Peter, being who he is, you know, he had not spoken very well. So, no, it cannot be. And so, after Christ was arrested, you know, Peter denied knowing Christ. He denied it like three times, just as Jesus Christ had said. And at the third time, he realized what had just happened. And he became timid. You know, he was because of he was afraid when Christ was arrested and everything, and then he became very timid. Okay, he was he was very he was afraid when Christ was arrested, so he became very timid. He became very afraid and scared. You know, because he was scared for his life. He 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 more or less withdrew. And then he became shy. And because he was shy, he couldn't really talk about anything that he knew. He was afraid. He became like fearful. But the revival happened on the day of Pentecost, which was what Jesus Christ spoke about in the, in the previous chapter that we, 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 we just and the previous verse that we just read in Acts 1 8 that says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses okay you will receive power and that power will make you able to witness not just to people around you not just to people in your local environment in your local vicinity but to people everywhere you will be able to be a witness Praise God. You will be able to stand up. What does it mean to witness? What does it mean to, to witness? It means that you'll be able to say, I was there. You know, it takes a lot of courage for someone to go to, for example, a court of law and say, My Lord, on the day of X, Y, Z, I was there. It was a lot of people might even know the truth, but they would be shy to go forward and say, This is how it happened. I can testify. I know what happened. You know, I'm aware I was there, it was this or that. It takes a lot of courage. So Jesus is talking about reviving our spirit, reviving us, giving us that boldness to stand up. When you experience a personal revival, people around you will see the difference in you and the person. So he says you will receive power after the, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And let's see how that is demonstrated in the life of in the life of Peter, talking about Peter, Peter that denied Jesus Christ three times. Just the night he was betrayed, the night he, he was arrested, and then when everything happened, Peter was jittery, Peter was afraid, Peter could not even identify with Christ. Chapter 2, uh, chapter two says, Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of the rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy, Holy Ghost 
and began to speak with other tongues and the spirit as the spirit gave them utterance praise god and they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are all these which speak which speak galileans and how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born passions meets Elamites and the dwellers in the Mesopotamia and in Judea, in Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia, you know, and the list goes on. People from different tribes and tongues could hear the disciples speaking, man, Lotaya, in with boldness, you know, speaking in tongues. And when you when you continue to read. In verse 17, no, in verse 14, the Bible says, But Peter, you know, so they, they were speaking in other tongues. And they, okay, let me read from verse 11. It said, Christians, Arabians, who do hear them speaking, uh, we do hear them speaking in our tongues, wonderful works of the wonderful about the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean this? What does mocking say? These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, You men of Judea, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This was the same Peter that was cowardly just a few nights ago. But because of the revival in his soul, because of the fire of God on him, because of the Holy Ghost in him, he could stand up boldly and talk about it. He could stand up boldly and speak to these people and face the crowd. And the Bible says a lot of people were converted that same day. Why? Because Peter stood up. He stood up and then he faced the crowd and then he spoke boldly hallelujah that was a revival move and god revived him he received revival in his spirit and he was able to to be bold enough to face the crowd and talk to them and say men and brethren we are not drunk no not with wine but we are filled with the spirit of god and he began to talk about the the, the good works that has happened and that has gone ahead and people were converted people's consciences were touched and they repented and the bible talks about about three thousand being added to the body of christ why because the spirit of one man was stirred up in revival and he stood up and he spoke up what will happen to you when your spirit is revived you know, the Bible speak, it says in the, in the book of Romans, it says, and, ye sh and if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. It will quicken your mortal body. That is revival in your body. What is that thing that is making you shy? What is that thing that is mocking the God in you? What is that thing that is mocking God in your life? When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there will be revival in your body. There will be revival in your life. There will be revival in every area of your life. Whatever has been mocking God in you, we will receive revival and your life will never be the same again. What is that thing that needs to be revived? What part of your life, you know? Some of us as Christians, we we, we, we should pay ourselves or we should be we, we sabotage ourselves because we are we, 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 we have this mentality that oh God is only interested in my spiritual life maybe he's not interested in what happens in my finances or he's not interested in what happens in my health so when it comes to these things we don't we don't we, don't, we are not practical about it 
we are not practical enough to know that there is a revival going on or to, to catch on the fire of revival in our lives. We are too, we are too um, indoctrinated to open our eyes to the reality of the power that God has made available to us as his children. We need to be awake. We need to be alive to the power of God. Praise God. And so he says, you shall receive power. Maya Landa Shadaya. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And we just see, we just saw the, 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 the example of Peter. How Peter received revival in a spirit. How Peter received revival and boldness to stand before the crowd and preach the gospel of Christ. He received power. Aye, aye, aye. He received power, and then we 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 hear today about people, Christians that doubt that there are miracles. About Christians that doubt that that things can happen. Why? Because they have not experienced the power of God. They have not exercised their faith in God. So today, God is talking to us about the. Power. The fact that power is available. In him, power is available. Power is available to heal the sick, the power to heal the sick, the power to raise the dead, the power to speak to mountains in your life and in the life of people around you, the power to affect your world positively. That power is available. That reviving spirit, that power, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, it will quicken your mother, but it will revive you to bring you alive to the realities of the word of God. That same power will bring you alive. It will revive you. It will revitalize you. It will quicken you in your spirit. And you will be able to do the works of God. You will be able, you will be emboldened to do the work of God. You will be emboldened to preach the gospel. You will be emboldened. You will no longer be shy, shy or timid. Some people just receive, you know, the gift of being born again, but they don't experience the power that is available in God. Today, I want you to begin to desire from today and so because by the time you continue in the, reading the book of Romans, our eyes are going to be open to so many deep things of God. And I want us to begin to desire revival in our spirit, revival in our lives. I personally am tired of living a life that is not filled, you know, with the kind of miracles I want to see when I read about people like Catherine Coleman, I am inspired to know that God can use me even more than He used Catherine Coleman, that God can use me even more than He used Peter, that God can use me even more than He used Paul, and is willing and is eager to do it. But there is a part that I need to play. There is a part that you need to play for you to see that power of God at work and at this in display in you and for you to experience the revival of God in your spirit. So we need to get there. We need to press in and we need to experience the revival of God. And the only way to do that is when we receive the, the Holy Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. We yield ourselves to Him. And allow him to do in us his good pleasure. Praise God. So, I want you to join me on this journey of revival. Where we receive the revival of God. Not just in our flesh. Not just for a personal end. Not just to a personal end. Not just for us to, you know, receive not just to, for us to gain personally from it, no sir, no man, but for us to be able to impact our world, to be positive influences on our world, on our generation, so that generations to come would, would, would benefit from the revival that happened in our days. We read about it, how when the, when the Apostle Paul, when he walks on the street, they put the the, the, the sick and then his shadow you know heals the sick and we, we've heard about apostles sending out handkerchiefs 
to heal the sick. And today, we've read about it. But beyond reading about it, beyond hearing about it, we need to start experiencing it. People need to start experiencing God in you. We need to activate the power of God in our lives. Some of us receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we have been selfish with it. Some of us receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we refuse to let God express himself in us. We're saying enough is enough. The power of God is available in us. We need to activate that power of God and let our world be a better place because God is alive in us. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining this Bible study this morning. I pray that the power of God that is available, the power of God that is active, the power of God that is alive, that same power that made Peter, who was that transformed Peter from being a shy man to being a transformed man, that began to stand in front of people and began, began to preach and began to minister to people and convert people in their thousands to God. That same power will begin to be manifested in our lives. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please don't miss, don't miss the revival tomorrow. Don't miss our Bible study tomorrow because it is going to be beyond Bible study. And if you desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can bow your head now and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for, for your children that are desiring the gift of the Holy Spirit after that they've given their lives to, to you, O oh God. I ask today that you, Holy Spirit, will baptize these people. You will show that you are alive in them. Holy Spirit, I ask that just like the, 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 the disciples experienced a quickening in their spirit and boldness was released unto them, that you will release your boldness unto these people to know that you're indwelling in them with the evidence of speaking in tongues and that this, your children will begin to experience you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Get into your closet. Get into your, your, your prayer, prayer places and begin to pray. Desiring this, the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray. Begin to pray and you will see the expression of God in you. And when people begin to encounter this in you, they will know that there has been a, there is a difference in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for joining today's live broadcast. Thank you so much for joining today's live broadcast. If you're seeing this video after it has been posted, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining live. Thank you to everyone that has been a part of the, 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 the part of this journey i pray that god will continue to strengthen you and give you the grace to continue to live in his presence and be emboldened by his power in jesus name amen amen have a good day everybody it's weekend yay have a good time in god's presence and continue to experience a greater dimension of God. I love you and God loves you. Bye-bye.